It's night. You're walking through an enormous, majestic forest. The sounds of the wilderness are comforting yet mysterious. Up ahead, you spot a group of scattered lit lanterns. Surrounding the lanterns, you notice moving figures. You curiously and slowly approach. You start to hear more sounds, different sounds, as if they could be a part of nature, yet somewhat alien. An imaginative, organic atmosphere of nature's music. You then realize that some of the sounds you are hearing are coming from these moving figures. People positioned among the lanterns and trees. They are playing their own music with the forest, as if the sounds of nature and their music are one. Welcome to Not Right Music. Today, we're going to talk about nature-inspired improvisation. This is a great topic and something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. The poster boy of American avant-garde music, John Cage, has often used atmospheric sounds in his music. Take his controversial piece 433, for example. His notorious piece in which the performer literally just sits at a piano without playing it for exactly 4 minutes and 33 seconds. Some people see it as being a concept on silence, yet others interpret it differently. One being an exercise on awareness of the sound surrounding us. How everything we hear is a composition based on how we choose to perceive it. The hum of the air conditioning providing a bass drone, while the sound of traffic counterpoints the squeaking of chairs on the floor with pieces of conversation that come and go as people walk past the open door. Depending on one's sensitivities to sound, there is always a composition unraveling before our ears. An atmospheric improvisation. A stroll through nature can be like walking through a musical amusement park. Naturally, people with an interest in playing free improvisation might use their sound environment as inspiration. If everything is music, then let's use everything to make music. Today's topic, we are playing atmospheric free improvisation inspired entirely from nature. Or at least, that's what we're aiming for. At times, it can become quite abstract, working with, extending, and mimicking the sounds and spirit of nature as we soak up the surrounding atmosphere and improvise with each other and the environment. And to help me today, I have these two guests. Okay, so, hello, uh, my name is Scott Jordan. Uh, today I'll be playing the Japanese koto, and we're going deep into the woods of Japan, and, well, we're going to pretend we're going deep into the woods of Japan, uh, somewhere where it's green, right? Under uh, the trees, under the trees. yeah. Hmm. Uh, and we're going to do some free improvisation. Hmm. Should be great. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I play the Indonesian instrument called Kechapi, and so I very enjoyed that night improvised session, and I felt uh, the feeling from the nature. Mm. That's example like a small small sound, or like <laughs> a, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, kind of that. Small sound is very important. Yeah, this yeah. Kind of music. yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh,
sounds of nature around us. Um, I would say, actually, I, for, for me, I, I know it's uh, the plane. Ah. The planes overhead and the, the uh. cars. You know, but, but to me, those sounds count as sounds of nature. Of course. Those are, those are natural sounds. Ah, oh, yeah, you say this mm, the, the, oh. the other, from the other yeah, sound or yes, sense. Yes. Soundscape music is created from audio recordings of the world around us, concentrating on environmental sounds. Pure soundscape or bio music would be Irv Tybell's Environments series, most of it being recordings of unadulterated nature sounds, pretty much what you're hearing right now. The series of recordings helped define the field recording hobbyist movement, where people would scatter around holding expensive microphones and recording equipment, eager to capture any sound they deemed worthy. The next step would be to use these sounds musically, such as what Luke Ferrari did in Prasquarian No. 1, where he recorded sounds of a beach, then went back to his studio and rearranged what he captured into a soundscape composition. Or try to detach the actual meanings and origins of the sounds themselves in an attempt to create new sound worlds, similar to Pierre Schaeffer's early works. Taking it even further, some composers, such as Hildegard Westerkamp add more sounds or music to them, creating entire compositions. But where would Reynolds' 10,000 Chicken Symphony fit into all this? <laughs> A lot of the, the the sounds and the progression that I use is it's actually inspired by nature, mm, mm, but yeah. it's not it's not intentional. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah I, I think musicians when we improvise we we try to play something good, of course, <laughs> of course something Sometimes. that sounds good. <laughs> so yeah, we we imitate. Oftentimes, yeah, we'll, we'll imitate other musicians and other mm. music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you want to play something abstract, mm -hmm. but you still want to play something good, of course, mm. just naturally, you're going to, uh, you're naturally going to imitate the sounds of nature. Maybe I should change the title of this video to How to Play Deep Forest Free Improvised Organic Ambient Drone Psychedelic World Atmospheric Folk Music. But really, it's simply free improvisation. We're dressing it up in a natural theme. You could actually dress it up in any theme or event you want. I call this soundscape improvisation because I believe that the sensitivities required to play it relates to what has become known as soundscape and a key awareness to one's environmental sounds. Either way you look at it, it's always a pleasure to participate in. Letting loose out in nature like this always gives me a sense of cleansing my soul. Especially after a few days of playing loud shows in smoky rooms, doing fast-paced studio work, and filling up the rest of my hours teaching. It's a wonderful idea to do with groups of friends, an alternative to hanging around your house or going out spending money. I've done these natural soundscape events in many various locations. Deep in forests, inside caves, the top of mountains, hot spring cabins, on beaches, and even behind a waterfall ones. So, pack your bags with instruments and head out on a musical adventure deep in the wilderness. Bring as many friends along as you can. Some will play, some will dance, some will build rock balancing towers, some might even sleep. 
If you're adding to the sounds of nature, there are no rules, no right or wrong or good or bad. Don't think too much about what to play. Get into a zone, wrap your ears around the forest, start creating some kind of sound. Then respond to what you played or to what the others did or to the sounds around you. Yeah. <laughs> 